Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKV Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 5 talking about managing the test activities and today we are continuing with our next segment that is 5.4 Configuration Management and here we'll be talking about what does it even mean when we say Configuration Management. Well, when it comes to configuration management, it's something which is very common and we quite often make use of it in our day-to-day -day work when we work within a particular project. But just being a very technical terminology, most of us may not be able to correlate that what we are talking about when we say configuration management. It's more about the version control, talking about uniquely identifying an item, also taking care of the change management of any particular entity within the project, and as well taking care of the history of changes. Now these are the four major elements what we take care of through configuration management. Of course it can be done manually or with using a tool. Mostly our tools have this embedded within the softwares and that's where the test management tools have this inbuilt and we may not really talk about it as an independent terminology or a particular tool. However you do get separate tools available to do this job. Now, what are these four parameters, what configuration management takes care of? That is uniquely identifying an item. That means it is something as a concept that every single item what you create, be it a testware, designs, codeware, or requirements, every single item must have a unique identity identification number. So when you talk about test case ID, you talk about defect ID, or if you talk about the code reference, so everything has to be uniquely identified, which basically makes it traceable to other entity and certainly makes it very simple for someone to really understand how the items are being connected to each other and what it does really take when it comes to the entire system or entire project. The second important element here is to talk about the version control. Any entity we all understand can be revised over a period of time and as and when it gets revised, it is very crucial to maintain the revisions. That means what changes takes place must create a new version of it. So 0.1 was the initial version of a document. If I made some changes, the changes can be addition, deletion, modification. So I just call it out as 0.2. And then if I further make a change, 0.3. So these versions are basically the version control, which we do for any kind of documentation. So even for testing documentation, we do the same. Then comes up certainly the mapping, which is traceability. And with help of unique identification, I can go ahead and establish the traceability, which is more of like linking two different items together. And then managing the history of revision, which certainly talks about what changes have taken place between two different revisions, two different versions. So I should be able to compare them and find out the difference between it. In simple words, if I have a 50 page document and maybe one or two lines have been modified, and I get an automated email from the tool that this particular item has been revised, then I don't have patience to go and read 50 pages to find out what has changed. So I can easily compare two versions and find out the highlighted changes within the document. So in simple word, configuration management takes care of these four major elements throughout the life cycle and so that it also covers the testing elements. So let's quickly have a look on what exactly the syllabus is trying to convey us and what else are the details of the configuration management. So in testing, configuration management provides a discipline for identifying, controlling, and tracking the work products, such as test plan, test strategies, test condition, test cases, test scripts, test results, test logs, and test reports as configuration items. For a complex configuration item, the CM, which is configuration management, records the item it consists of, their relationships, and the versions. If the configuration item is approved for testing, it becomes a baseline and can only be changed through a formal change control process. In simple words, most, most of our tool, what we make use of, has this inbuilt. That's the reason you may see these as something very unique, which probably we don't use it independently, but of, of course, it's a part of our day-to-day -day work. So yes, exactly once it is approved, then it gets into the uh, version control process. And since then, it has to be managed for any kind of revisions what are made on it. Also to add here, uh, configuration management keeps a record of changed configuration items. When a new baseline is created, it is also possible to revert a previous baseline to reproduce 
the previous test results. To properly supporting testing, configuration management ensures the following. That is one, all the configuration items, including test items, which includes the parts of the test objects as well, are uniquely identified, version controlled, tracked for changes, and related to other configuration items so that traceability can be maintained throughout the test process. And I think that's the major four parts what we just discussed a moment ago. Also to add, right here, all identified documentation and software items are referred unambiguously in the test documentation. Also to add, when it comes to CI or CD or continuous deployment and the associated testing are typically implemented as a part of an automated DevOps pipeline in which automated configuration management is normally included. So in case any such tool which basically performs this activity for you are referred to as the configuration management tool itself. Now the one critical thing to remember from here, the configuration management tools are the only tool which are rolled out during test planning phase itself. Because planning is also a document, it contains a test plan and it can also be revised over a period of time. Thus, this is the only tool which gets rolled out during planning, whereas all other tools, what we use in testing, gets rolled out during test implementation. Many people go wrong here because they think all the tools gets rolled out into test implementation phase. Thus, this tool will also be. Answer is no. This tool is the only one which basically gets rolled out right in the beginning of the life cycle. So put together, in simple words, that's all what we had from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.